What is up guys, I hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering Just Know HOA. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell. And with that being said, let's get straight into today's stories. Much love guys. Our first story is from Grodon. Quit HOA, home doubles in value. Disclaimer, huge wall of text ahead. This is quite a long story, spanning through a period of a few years. I've taken some licenses for entertainment purposes and altered many details for privacy, but the facts are all there. TLDR in the title. About 20 years ago, my uncle acquired, bought an apartment in a new fancy condo. Each floor was separated in two apartments, except for the top floor, which was a single apartment more than double the size, with a private attic. All of the units had a storage area in the basement. He got the top floor. The building had a large common hall and a large yard all around it, so the owners decided to create an HOA to maintain the common areas and protect property value. My uncle has always been an independent man, so he wasn't keen on the idea, but he recognised it was necessary. However, he proposed an article in statute allowing any member to recede from the HOA by paying a contribution and entering a limited agreement. People under this contract would not be in the HOA, but would be required to contribute to common expenses, light, cleaning, administration, etc. and maintenance though in this case the HOA was required to confront their respective quotes for the job before proceeding. Since the votes were based on service owned, and thus he had the swing vote, the rule was included in the statute. A couple of years go by without a hitch, the HOA works as planned, a couple more units are sold, everything is fine and dandy. Enter Karen. My uncle describes Karen as your worst high school teacher, with a resting bitch face like she was constantly smelling sewage. In reality, she was a plain woman in her 50s, dirty blonde, single, a pocket dog and two cats, with a mildly annoyed expression frozen on her face and the fashion sense of Dolores Umbridge. Although after reading Reddit posts, I'm having a hard time not superimposing the classic Karen hairstyle on her. She was one of the original owners, but never had much interaction with the others. The first time my uncle took any notice of her was when she tried to introduce a rule preventing children from playing in the common hall because their rowdiness and the prospective damage they could cause might decrease property value. My uncle didn't like participating in the meetings and he didn't have kids, yet, but that time he intervened, saying that he'd rather have happy kids around, even if it meant losing a bit of value, and proposed creating an emergency fund for accidental damage instead. Karen was outvoted. While they were leaving the conference room, she threw a look at him like she was about to breathe fire on him. He disliked and distrusted her from that moment on. Karen tried several times to pass more restrictive rules, but she kept getting outvoted, even thanks to my uncle's double vote. But at that time, she was doing something else. She was buying additional units and forcing her rules onto her tenants, including those regarding the common areas. So that meant her tenants' kids couldn't play with other kids in the common hall, for instance, that one was nearly impossible to enforce and led to complaints. Over time, thanks to her by now four votes, Karen got a seat in the HOA. That was an alarm bell for my uncle, who fired to leave the HOA, as per his own article, on the same day. And not a moment too soon, as that article was cancelled even before his request was processed. The HOA then initially denied his request, and he had to sue and go to arbitration, to prove he had filed his request before the rule was expunged. But from that moment, he was free. Over the next couple of years, he had to go to arbitration twice more. Once because the HOA demanded payment for a renovation without giving him a chance to present an alternative quote. And once because Karen and her newfound clique kept harassing him with fines he didn't have to pay. He won both times and Karen was beyond hate. Every time they met each other, she looked at him with such contempt he actually started fearing for his safety. In this period, Karen's increasingly restrictive rules had caused a high turnover of both of tenants and owners. Even if everything was still in pristine condition, Karen was very good at that. The HOA rules were a hard sell. This had decreased the value of the apartments a lot, and Karen used this to buy even more lots. Ended up with six total. When my aunt got pregnant, they decided that the condo was not kid-friendly anymore, so they decided to sell. As I mentioned, the property value had dropped in the recent years, but evidently not my uncle's apartment. When he put it on the market, he advertised as free from local HOA. He ended up selling it to one of the other former residents for almost double the price, four square foot, than any other apartment in the building. Happy end? Wait, there's more. 
A couple of weeks after moving, my uncle received a call from the very distraught new owner, saying that the members of the HOA are harassing him and that Karen threatened to sue him because the HOA has a new rule that all owners must sign up for the HOA. My uncle verbatim, so you're not part of the HOA, you don't need to give a shit about the rules they make. New owner pauses as he processes the information and then laughs. They chatted a bit and the new owner, after enduring for years, was quite happy about the prospect of fucking with Karen and the powerless HOA. The end. I see, I know the every time we do the HOA stories, I know like these are the worst of the worst and HOAs in general are a good thing. Also, you guys have told me so far, but gee whiz, it's like a little mafia thing going on there. I can just see that woman sitting at the head of the table and bossing people around and telling them what they have to do and all this kind of crap. It's absolute, it's madness. Absolute madness. <laughs> Oh, wow. What do you guys make of that story? Even though OP won in the end. How would you deal with that Karen and her HOA clique? Is there a way to deal with it? Let me know below. Our next story is from Timothy J. Weiss. I hope I got your name right. Sorry if I butchered it. My potted plant is a violation. Last year at my townhouse in Washington state, I received a notice and a $50 fine from my HOA with a notice stating that I have potted plants on my cement front porch that need catch basins. The notice quoted association rule 4.5 as stating, potted plants on A and B unit porches and patios must be contained with a planter that has a water catch basin. They gave four days to comply or get further fines. I found the requirement absurd considering the porch is cement, not wood, and my small plant pots don't have a hole in the bottom for drainage. In addition, I noticed they didn't state a requirement for what is commonly listed as a plant saucer in stores, but very specifically a water catch basin. In order to avoid more arbitrary fines, I looked a specific type up in stores and online with Amazon. It appears a water catch basin is actually a storm drainage conduit, having nothing to do with potted plants. The cheapest online being $49. A picture from Amazon looks like this. The rule is written in such a way to allow HOA to arbitrarily fine anyone for not have a specific impossible type specified in the rules. I decided it would be safer not to have any plants at all on my porch. My letter noting the problem with wording did not receive a response, as usual. I've gone ahead and purchased the Ugly Storm Drainage Conduit Kit and decided that I will lay it out on top of my porch this spring with a nice small potted plant sitting on top. A suggestion was by a friend made to hook a bright piece of PVC pipe to it leading to my yard to make it functional and therefore be in full compliance with their rule as written. Although I might change my mind for malicious compliance and buy a hot pink plastic or inflatable child's wading pool to set it in. <laughs> oh, I love that you're going to risk getting another fine just for that malicious compliance that is just so juicy i think you should definitely go for the hot pink plastic pool though <laughs> maybe with like a little inflatable palm tree sticking out of it as well go the whole hog treat yourself what do you guys make of that story when they can't write the rules correctly themselves and they're finding people for it what kind of bullshit is that and our next story is from crest of the way the hoa exemption does anyone else enjoy a HOA exemption? When I bought my home, I learned from the agent that my 57 acres had a grandfathered exemption because reasons. I guess the previous occupants voluntarily followed the HOA bylaws, but didn't pay the dues or anything like that. Now the neighborhood, Karen, is all up in arms about me leaving my car in the driveway overnight, as prohibited by the HOA. Even though I've explained to her twice now that I'm not a dues paying member, nor am I obliged to abide by the HOA bylaws. Edit, thanks for all the fun and awesome ideas. I just want to add that I'm a 20 year old kid really. I just recently lost my dad, absent for most of my life and left me a nice gift in his will. I bought this house because I always wanted to live in a safe neighborhood and have some non-violent drug free neighbors. I didn't think about the possibility that some of my neighbors would be like the kids that used to bully me growing up. I'm not trying to feel the rush of power that comes with not having the same set of rules that they do. That would make me like them. I do intend to buck their system a little, but I don't want to ostracize myself from the people around me. I will still do my own thing on my own property, within local ordinances, or keeping it tasteful and subtle. I will pursue nuanced resistance. <laughs> wow though. Imagine ca having a car on your drive overnight. On your drive overnight. You can't keep your car on your drive overnight. What is this voodoo? For real? 
It's absolutely madness. <laughs> Our next story is from Kugrad. No, I will not ask some kids to leave your playground. Years ago, I moved into a new house in a fairly new development and foolishly thought it was the right thing to do. I went to the first HOA meeting. I somehow came at that meeting the newly elected HOA president, a position I loathed for the 18 months I put up with it. As president, I was pretty lax on what was allowed. You aren't asking to paint your house all black with a giant middle finger on the side. We're cool. My main concern was keeping the common areas maintained, e.g. stormwater runoff pond, couple of green spaces, everything else was just noise. Now the development on the street over from ours had a much more, let's say, aggressive HOA. But to be fair, they had a lot more houses and common property to maintain, including four different playgrounds. In my community, we didn't have any. Somehow the present in the other neighborhood got my number and I had to have this conversation with her. Me, me, CHP, crazy HOA president. I said, hello. And they said, hi, I'm the HOA president from XX community. I need to talk about a problem that affects both of us. I said, okay. We've had a lot of kids that I know aren't part of our community playing basketball at one of our playgrounds. And it's very disruptive and keeping our kids from using it. I know a lot of those kids are probably coming from your neighborhood. I said, so what am I supposed to do about that? Well, I've asked them many times to leave, but they just don't listen to me. So here's what we should do. Next time this happens and I know they're from your neighborhood, I'm gonna call you and I need you to go over and tell them to leave. I literally didn't say anything for a minute. I was so stunned she thought this was a good idea. I said, no, I will not ask some kids to leave your playground. If those kids are not leaving the playground when you ask, what makes you think they're gonna leave when I ask? The CHP is getting huffy now. So you're saying you're not gonna help with this problem. What do you propose we do then? I said, get rid of the basketball court. If there's a basketball court, kids will go to play, period. Well, that is not acceptable. Well, short of hiring private security or calling the police every time you think someone is trespassing, I didn't have any solutions for you. The CHP said, I can't believe you won't help your fellow HOA president. Click. Ironically, my wife and I moved into that same neighborhood with CHP recently, and she was one of the first people to greet us. I'm pretty sure she doesn't realize it was me she was talking to years earlier. <laughs> I'd keep that one on the quiet, my friend, if I was you, or you're in the shit. <laughs> God. It's, it's all territory as well, isn't it? Defending your territory. It's just like little tribes protecting their, their land and stuff. I know they pay for the upkeep of these things, but I mean the kids, man. Oh dear. I mean, in, you'd thought they're just appreciating kids enjoying the playgrounds and having a good time. I mean, they're probably not wrecking the place. They're just enjoying the facilities there. It's so sad that we have to protect things against kids when there's already a lack of things to do for the younger generations and we're stopping them with these silly, silly little things, these petty little things. In the grand scheme of things, these are so, so petty. It makes me sick. Anyway, guys, what do you make of this story? I find it absolutely... Well, I always find HOA stories absolutely mad. Crazy. <laughs> Being in the UK, I know we got, someone in the comments once said we had something very similar to it, but... You don't see or you don't hear stories like these. These are absolutely nuts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear it. If you've enjoyed these stories, it'd be very helpful for you to click that like. Maybe subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in the next one. Much love, guys. Take care now.